Hello everyone. I hope you can hear me. Okay. Let me share my screen. I hope you can see my screen as well. Please just confirm. So we are in a good position to start. You can see, you can hear. Okay. Fine. So as you know, today's topic is the ultimate guide to learning stats and mathematics for data science. I have chosen this topic because I prefer to choose the topic which are less spoken about. I think what I have observed during my journey as a data science trainer, many data science learners are coming from non-mathematical backgrounds. Some are even coming from non-technical background like arts or something, no technical background at all. And they are trying to switch their career to data science, data analytics. Looking at the availability of tools these days, we have open source softwares. We also have some tools where you really don't need to code too much. So looking at that, people are trying to learn data science, which is a good thing. But they struggle when they see some math or statistics discussed. So in the starting, you can manage without math and stats. You must have seen some courses, you must have done some courses, you must have read some of the books. But if you try to go a little deep, if you try to understand at least basic understanding of some of the topics of mathematics or statistics is required, right? And many a times in my trainings, in my programs, students interact with me and they try to ask me, guide about this thing. Especially when we touch upon the statistics topics, like in some of the courses we offer uh, for machine learning and data science, sometimes they include one or two sessions maybe for statistics. But that time, you know, in the limited time, two, three sessions maximum, we can't discuss everything, right? So I try my best to give them whatever uh, is needed for them in simple terms to, uh, as per the audience, but uh, they, you know, again ask that we need more resources, we want to read about this topic more, or we want more practice problems. Because of course, if we teach some topic in limited sessions in a course, we can't teach them everything. We can't guide them through practice exercises, solution, assignment, assessment, unless it is a purely math and stats dedicated course, right? In data science course or in machine learning course, we have a limitation how much time we can dedicate for these topics, which are the foundational topics. But, you know, we usually don't touch those topics. There is a reason we can't teach everything in data science course. But here we are talking about how you can learn these things. I'm not sure what is your background. It would be great if you can write in the chat about your background, maybe how much you are comfortable with math and stats, your thought, your opinion, or your you know perception about how good or how bad you are at math and stats. I'll see the chat in a short while so that I get some idea about uh, what level you are in and what do you expect from me. Also, because the webinar will be there on YouTube where maybe new learners will be watching this video and trying to learn something. So I'll try to give my insight, keeping in mind the audience which are not comfortable with math, uh, you know, how they can learn with math. Okay. Before I start talking about the topic, I think I should introduce myself. 
So I am Dr. Nisha Arora, and I am an educator by heart. Although I do deliver corporate trainings, but I am by heart, you know, an educator who believes in igniting the minds. Of course, as a trainer or as a professor, many a times my responsibility include to complete a topic in the given time frame, right? To the batch which is assigned to me, all those things. But still, I personally believe if I'm teaching in a class, my responsibility is for all the students sitting in front of me, online or offline, whatever. And my responsibility is to make my project or my topic, the one which I'm teaching, comfortable for all. As I said, it's always, always a limitation with every course, every teacher, every trainer, we can't teach you 100% of what we know or what we can teach. Always there is a time limitation and many other kind of limitations. So when I teach a topic, I prefer to teach you the topic, but also to teach you how to learn the topic. Right? And that is something which makes my subject accessible interesting to my student. When I started teaching as a professor, you can read my background. I am PhD in math. I had started my career as a professor of mathematics. Mathematics, but that time I started taking other courses as well like math for BSc, MSc students, engineering math, which is different from, you know, BSc, MSc math, uh, statistics for MBA students, statistics for CA professionals, statistics and research methodology for PhD scholars, for MBA executives, supply chain management, total quality management. So it has some portion of the statistics in the background, all those different type of courses. And along with some of the tools, usually in university program, we are supposed to teach without any tool. But I tried to introduce some tools by talking to the management that at this moment, students need to know at least Excel, if not any paid software, right? That was not the era of free open source popular softwares, but at least Excel students should know. So I used to teach all these subjects and I entered the teaching profession with one passion in my mind. I used to, and I still love math. So the passion was I want to make math everyone's favorite and everyone means everyone in my class. So when I started, I realized it's not an easy job because students hate math, they fear math. And I was trying to put all my effort to make it their favorite subject. And I could really achieve a great success there. I got so many emails, communications, messages, and of course, the verbal uh, communications from my students and university staff that I was able to, you know, take out the sphere from many of the students. Student used to write me an email that because of the effort you are talking, uh, you know, taking to make it easy for us, now we are realizing that we can do it. And now we are willing to put more effort into it, right? So I will here mainly focus on how you can learn it or how someone can teach it. Because of course, in the webinar, I can't teach you math, right? I can't teach you STEM. I can't teach you everything you need. But I can teach you how you can learn or how anyone can teach you, right? So those will be the focus areas. And of course, I take trainings in data science, visualization, storytelling, etc. And I love to contribute to community. So many of the QA sites, communities, blogs, Everywhere, I love to contribute by writing my posts, my answers. On LinkedIn also, there are some answers and, uh, you know, posts and articles I had shared. Uh, some of my material I used to share on SlideShare, but then I realized plagiarism is at peak, so I stopped sharing there. I share some of the answers in the Google groups and maybe some other groups as well. I also have my own YouTube channel where some playlists are there for math, stats, Python, little bit of R and little bit of something else as well, right? So this is my contribution. I think nobody has written anything in the chat. It would be great if you can write about your background in the chat. Else, because I usually prefer my sessions to be interactive, right? Because if we interact, 
I might get five minutes less time to speak, but that way we can make the session effective and you can learn better. So, okay. Good to see some responses in the chat. Everyone, please write. I'm not asking you to write something very detailed. Maybe you can write about your degree experience or you know profile if you want. But mainly you need to write about your comfort zone about math and stats. What bothers you or what is good with you in this these two subjects? And any specific question which you think I should take up? Maybe I'll take when I am... Um, uh, presenting my talk or maybe if it is not yet covered i'll take your questions in the end last five ten minutes so usually what are a few questions which i often hear from the students i have mentioned here you can see three main questions if you have anything else type your response in the chat to save time I'm not opening up a breakout session. You might be knowing what is that in Zoom, where I allow the students to interact and then come up with some conclusion, right? So let's save time. Let's not do that. You can write your responses in the chat, and then we will continue. OK, so Amit said, you are BTEC and very good in math. Then this is good, Amit, if you already have background and you are comfortable with it. So I don't think you will need a lot of stuff here, but yes, I will share some of the resources which might be useful to you. Yeah, so Ansh, Shani, uh, you can say anything else, etc. Uh, uh, the more I read, the more I become confused. Okay, that's your question, Ansh. And Shani, you are saying I am from planning background, architecture, then retail experience, okay. Chat is disabled. How can you answer? Okay, okay. I host. Can you when is that? You can write in the QA. No, no issues. I'm checking that as well. So treat this as the chat. Okay, no issues. Mm, kindly suggest me how can I prepare for interview and how to prepare for resume. It's not related to the topic, today's topic, but if you are asking in context of math and stats, okay, I'll guide uh, you maybe in the end, Shani. What else? So you people can write in QA session, uh, QA section here, right? If chat is disabled for you. Okay. So I think Shiny has asked a different question about interview preparation and all. This we can take later on. You can remind me in last 5-10 minutes. But other common question are maybe some of the students fear math. Those who are not writing any response in the chat, probably they are little shy to admit the fact that they don't like math or they fear math. This can be one of the issues. Second, as somebody mentioned that I try to study, but if I study more, I get confused. I have seen a student trying really hard to understand statistics. They read it from multiple sources. They try to learn it from many courses. And after spending few weeks, even few months, they are even more confused what they have learned. Or what they have learned is not perfect. Perfect in the sense they learn something which is wrong, incorrect. Because, you know, in the age of information overload, you need to ensure you are learning it from the right place. Because if you are trying to learn it from someone else's blog, which looks easy reading for you and you think you can understand his language or her language, but no guarantee that everything which is written in the blog is perfect, correct. Right? Because we can't validate who has written the blog and uh, if it is totally correct information or not. So that is also one challenge which I see. And of course, some of the students, and I think many of the students say that we don't find good resources. Right? So these are three broad categories of issues which a student face. There might be other questions as well. Uh, let me check the chat. How to start with the stats? Okay. Engineering background, good with math, linear algebra, calculus, but little exposure. 
of the stats. Okay, Nikhilish, you will see here. Pritisha says, what can we do to understand calculus? Okay. And Namrita said, biologist planning to do trouble in the application concept of math and real life problem. Okay. Brush up in important concept. Fine. Reliable source to learn correct. Okay. So, I think I got some idea about what you're trying to say. Hold on your chats. First, let's continue what I have to offer from you, uh, for you. And in last 10 minutes, again, we will discuss if anything is there which is not yet answered. Okay. So, today's agenda is, first of all, I will talk about this math anxiety thing. Although I think uh, you people have not mentioned it, but still I'll talk about it, maybe a little brief. It is important to talk about it because I have seen math fear, math phobia is real. Math professor has experienced it. Many students just fear it or just hate it. And that is the reason they don't come to the class with the mindset that I am here to learn math. They come to the class with the mindset, okay, attendance is compulsory or this course is compulsory or this much mark is compulsory and I really can't do good in that. You know, so they first reject the subject and they come to class to learn it. Right, so I'll talk about it because for me it is really very important if there is anyone who fear maths to take out that fear, that is the first step. Okay. I'll also talk about learning dilemma as somebody says that I get confused, right? So what can be the reason if you are trying to learn? And it's not only about the wrong resource. Probably you are learning from the best book. Probably you are learning from the best course or YouTube playlist, which is very popular and recommended by many. But then too, after learning, you get confused. So what can be the issue or challenges or solutions to it, we will talk about. Then I have discussed about statistics, different ways, different approaches to learn statistics. Somebody has asked it, how can I learn it? So you will get some insight about what are different ways you can learn statistics. And you need to pick what suits your requirement. I think after my session, you will be able to pick one or two approaches which best meet your requirement. Then I have talked about essential topics in statistics which you need to read or study from wherever you are planning to look. Okay. And finally, I have also talked about essential mathematical topics to study. Now, of course, uh, we can't expect those who are from math, math, non-math background to study all mathematical subjects just to get into data science or just to get better at data science. Those who already have math degree, like some of the students said we are good in math, then it's okay. You already have the background. You can just brush up few concepts. Even it happens with me. Math, the formulas, the derivation I used to do. But that is 15, 16 years ago. Those Laplace transform, Fourier transform, complex analysis, lot of beautiful things. 16 years ago, I used to love them. And in, you know, in my sleep, I used to solve problem. It is possible. But now, maybe I'm forgetting the formulas. If you say that, you'll teach me this topic right now. Probably I'm not ready. I need to brush up. Right? So it is okay. Those who have the background, they want to brush up. They can brush up more topics or maybe in the depth. But those who don't have background, I'll tell you bare minimum what are the subjects or topics you should try to get into. Again, I'm saying and highlighting you can start learning data science without learning math and uh, statistics, right? But it will help you whenever you have time, whenever you are ready, whenever you have the willingness, try to learn at least some of the topics to feel confident about doing data science. Right? And you will realize it is useful. Finally, I'll share some of the resources for almost all the topics which I'm mentioning. And then QA session or any closing thoughts which we need to. Okay. So the very first question, as I said, is dealing with math phobia, if you have. So what are the reasons 
there is a, a reason why I love math and science in general. You know, in school, students have science and history and this and that and language and other subjects. But why science and maths are the subject which students with logical minds like the most? Because in these two subjects, you try to go to the root cause. Try to understand the concept, the logics, the rules, the theorems, the formulas. And then if you are comfortable with those, you will be able to solve the problems, right? Your answer, everyone else's answer should be same, right? In other subjects like language, psychology and other subjects, maybe the, you know, problems and their solutions are subjective. Depends upon the perceptions and a lot of things. So here if I ask you a question, why do you fear math? If I ask you this question and if I pause for five minutes, all of you will come up with a lot of answers. That why do people fear math? Maybe you don't fear, but why do usually students fear math? Probably you will come up with a lot of answers after brainstorming. So if I quickly mention all the key reasons, broad reasons, of course we can write, you know, a lot of points, but broadly what are the reasons why do people don't like math or, you know, they fear math? So very first reason, which I could point out is early negative experience. This is really very important reason. So from the early years, school years, students, they got negative experience about learning. So like primary classes, if some students are not able to perform good in math. For example, suppose, you know, in primary class, you're just teaching them addition, multiplication kind of thing. Very simple thing. If you're teaching them addition and as a teacher, and you're asking them to solve some problem and some student performs some mistake. What happens in a math class? Student is trying to do, suppose you have given 10 questions and a student has, you know, done five, six questions wrong or four questions wrong, whatever. Some mistakes are there. Usually what teachers say, what parents say, you made a mistake, you have scored low, you can't do good in math, you need to practice more, right? And those experiences can, you know, be permanent in the learner's mind that I'm not good in math. I personally believe doing mistakes are different. Being bad in math is different. Sometimes students can be really, really good in math, still make mistakes. I hope you will agree with me, right? But what happens in the early years, maybe even in your university programs, you have done BTEC, you have done MBS. If you have taken any math or a stats course, professors usually tell you if you if you do something wrong, if you can't score good, you might be hearing it all around you, all around the you know class and everywhere. That math score is usually low, math results are usually bad, students are not performing good in math, you know, a lot of things. So these negative tags, negative experiences can be one of the reasons. Another thing is perceived difficulty. Now from years on, years on, there is a perception in general, in everyone, that this is a difficult subject. So this perception, see, once we say it is a difficult subject and then we start teaching or learning it, our mind is already accepting it is something difficult I am going to try out. Understanding? So this perceived difficulty, everyone thinks it is difficult. Everyone thinks it is impossible. Everyone thinks it is not doable. Everyone thinks it takes too much time, right? Everyone thinks it's not my cup of tea. It makes it even more difficult. I have seen my kid is there in grade two. Of course, I love math. She loves math, so it's good for us. But I can see her friends, their parents, basics. You can imagine class one or class two math. What is there in math? We all can understand, teach the kids and all. But parents say, because I am not good in math, how can I teach math to my kid? And that is why my kid is not doing good in math. Now, imagine class one, class two student. And we are, you know, putting this perception in their mind. They can do, probably they need more practice, probably they need more explanation. 
but this kind of negative perception is there which makes it you know the anxiety is increased in the students when they think about learning math over emphasis on speed is again one of the challenge which makes it tedious for some of the learners for example if you can calculate whatever you want to calculate but it takes time what's the harm because these days if there is some complicated calculation you can use tools and of course i don't personally prefer but these days even if you want to do simple plus and minus you are doing grocery shopping vegetable shopping you just want to you know add the total bill if you can't do verbally it's okay you can open mobile do the calculation if you want to verify right but still from early on we over emphasize on the speed for example we have all the courses abacus learning and all those for fast calculation courses are okay but in class we emphasize it if we ask a question to a kid the one who takes time to respond we label that student as slow learner not good in math can't do math those kind of negative labels right and sometimes just because of trying to speed up student make mistakes right it happens and we make mistakes in other subjects as well like in english if you write very fast if you type very fast you will make a spelling mistakes but here we highlight it too much a small mistake can change answer can reduce your marks but we over emphasize on speed and that is again one of the reasons student don't like or start hitting maths from early age pressure to succeed because mathematics is very important subject which is the foundation of many different domains dimensions areas there are only few areas probably where you don't need to be good at math art singing dancing drawing painting whatever speech psychology maybe in those areas you don't need math but almost all technical areas it would be added advantage if you are great with math so from early on or from even in later stage we pressurize ourselves or maybe the kids maybe the learners to become successful in math right without knowing it or without accepting the fact few people are naturally good with math few people are naturally good with something else right so i think we should not be judgmental about anyone we should be with open mind you are learning try to learn okay how much you can do good great progress but we can't pressurize everyone to excel in what we think is important okay lack of confidence i have seen many student who were good in math or average in math or probably earlier not that great but after taking the course you know getting motivated doing more practice revising everything they started improving a lot but they lack confidence if i ask can you solve this problem they will never raise the hand they will say you know i'm not sure i can do it because they think that they are not good at it you know so these are many reasons which are the main causes of math anxiety math fear now i think you people have not mentioned math anxiety so let's try to cover it little fast what are the solutions and strategy one thing is positive reinforcement so from early age if a learner is having this label i am not good with math so i hear it really really very often in almost all my data science or ml classes i usually interact first few minutes with my student and i ask them how comfortable you are with math or stats and many students say this many students say this so if you have this negative level you need to change it you need to say that i love math instead of saying i hate it i fear it start saying i love math believe in positive affirmation right start with that mindset start with positive mindset if a student is making mistake it doesn't mean the student is not good in that subject probably that time student is not interested 
probably he is lacking focus probably he is going through something else and not able to pay attention right so there can be many reasons many factors probably he missed previous one or two classes he could not revise so he is not able to do current problem which you are asking many reasons are there but we immediately become judgmental but they should be avoided <coughs> Individualized learning, like somebody says, I get confused. Of course, I'll tell you some ways, probably you will not get confused. But still, if you think that I really can't do it, self-study is not helping me. You are giving me good books, resources, topics to study, approach to study, but really, I, I'm not able to do it. If this is your thing, please consider individualized, customized learning. Means you need to consider, do you need a mentor, instructor, trainer who can teach you in a small batch or maybe individually? Who can take your queries and give you the path, right? So maybe some of the students really need it. And it's okay, right? Promote peer collaboration. It is very, very important. You might be knowing coders who code. IT professionals who work in IT company every day. Don't they share their code and errors and bugs and discuss and, you know, help each other, right? So that should happen in math as well. Not only the concepts, if you are solving problems with paper and pen doing the calculation and derivation and you are not able to do or you have some issues. So you should have a group where you can discuss and get answers and, you know, peer learning should happen. This will really help you not only in getting solutions but also in building a uh, collaboration and it will increase your confidence as well. And you will learn from each other, different approaches. Interactive learning. It is again very important thing for the teachers. If any professor or teacher is going to watch this talk, it's really, really important. In today's era, we can teach all the complex, complicated, abstract topics of mathematics by using beautiful tools. There are many tools available these days, right? Of course, because I myself a person of math, I understand and I agree many a times we need to derive things. It depends to whom I'm teaching, what I'm teaching and what depth I'm teaching, right? I can derive, I can do a course totally with all equations, paper and pen, no software needed. But if required, we need to use interactive tools to increase the participation's involvement and to increase their level of understanding. And it really, really helps. It really, really helps. Simple, simple example to my kid. I wanted to introduce the concept of negative numbers. Lift is a good place to start with. She's a toddler. With lifts, I started teaching her addition, subtraction, the numbers on the lift, you know, every floor number. Then, even number, odd number, count by two, count by three, and the negative number. A lot of concepts I could introduce you because we always, I think every day we use lift. In every lift we have the numbers. So suppose the lift numbers are like this. Depends where you are staying. So if I have the floor numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and all. So I was teaching her count by three here. Negative, basement it is going. I was introducing negative numbers. She is just in grade one or senior KCC was. So in a school curriculum, there was no mention, but she was knowing the concept, right? I introduced to her, you know, a lot of things. She, the coordinates, coordinate geometry. There are lots of tools. There are lots of fun ways to introduce the topics. And depending upon the age, the audience, the level of understanding, you need to fine tune the way you are teaching and you can make it beautiful, right? Normalizing mistake is really, really important. It is completely okay to make mistakes. We all make mistakes when we type or write some text, spelling mistakes, in Hindi, matra mistakes, or in any other language, those kind of mistakes. If we speak a language, maybe English, maybe our own native language, we are really comfortable with it. The vocabulary, the language, the grammar, we understand it. But when we speak in the flow, we make mistakes and it's okay. No one notices that. Right? But in math, everyone notice. In math, 
suppose I write, you know, suppose I write this, 9, this equal to 9, and I'm writing the table of 9. And there was a, you know, something I read somewhere. Somebody have written the table like this. It was the entire table written correctly, but in the end, professor has written like this. Entire table, everything else perfect. Just one mistake. Maybe by mistake, typo error, writing error, speaking, typing, whatever, or maybe intentionally. So if anyone sees the tables, our attention goes to this and we say, Professor, you have done something wrong. Right? So we focus too much on mistakes. Let's avoid that. It's okay to make mistakes. Okay. So let's talk about the second question. Somebody says, I get confused. If I study more, I try to learn more, I get confused. So in my opinion, the core reasons, the primary reasons are probably you are not learning from the best or right or suitable resources. I can't use the word best actually because suppose you Google, give me the best book for calculus, best book for statistics, best book for linear algebra and you got a lot of recommendation. Suppose you have bought uh, a book on Amazon, which is really expensive book, and you have read all the reviews, everybody is appreciating. But when you open the book, you are not able to understand it. Then this book might be best for others, but really worse for you. You need to figure out what is the best resource for you. What is the suitable resource for you? Because we all understand differently. When I teach, I always have this thing in my mind. Every learner's way of learning is different. Every teacher's way of teaching is different. I try to understand my student in first one or two class and then modify my way of teaching according. Right? So when you are doing self-study, you need to spend some time, maybe a few hours, maybe a few days, to figure out what do you want to learn, from where do you want to learn, can you understand from this book or this course or not? Is it clearing your doubts or it is making you a lot of, um, you know, more confused? Figure out yourself. Then decide, okay, I'm going to follow this resource. Just one resource at a time. I will suggest you too many books, but you need to open just one book at a time and start learning from that book. And I'll suggest you, if you can't understand, if you have a question, where to go there. To get answers. Second thing, as I said, some of the students really need a mentor because not everyone is good with math stats, not everyone is good with self study. Right? So maybe you need a mentor, maybe you need a course, crash course, detailed course, whatever, whatever. You need to figure out. And maybe the reason which is often ignored, you are not studying it in the right sequence. It happens. Whatever. Topic, subject you are studying, if you are doing it in haphazard sequence, it is going to make you confused. Really. I have seen people study inferential statistics. Right? This is a topic which is very useful. The blogs, the books, the presentation by some of the content creator I have seen. It's totally messed up. One time they are teaching something else, other time they are teaching something else and going back and forth between those topics. It should be perfect in harmony, a smooth, systematic way. What you are putting in your mind, step by step by step by step. Right? Everything has to go in right sequence in your mind. Then you will understand it better. Right? And for example, you are studying something and you think, okay, they are using this word. For example, I'm teaching you inferential statistics and I use the word central limit theorem. You have not studied it. So you are blank what I'm talking about. Suppose you opened Google and figured out what is central limit theorem. They mentioned there in the explanation sampling distribution. Now you don't know what is sampling distribution. Again blank. You open Google and search for sampling distribution. Try to understand that. Right? So if you are learning this way, you will spend more time and you will learn less because you started with something and then you are going to, you know, figure out all other things which are needed. That's not the right way. Try to learn the basics better, very strong foundation, then move to the topic. 
student usually hurry up to the topic which is important. Important topics will come once you have a strong foundation. For example, if you want to learn system of linear equations, optimization methods, numerical methods, uh, you want to learn metrics, you want to learn uh, vector operations, span, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, there is a sequence. You need to start with very simple. What is a scalar? What is a vector? What is the meaning when I say vector in linear algebra? What does it mean? Do we have any interpretation, geometrical interpretation of it? When I say vector addition, what does it mean? When I say basis, what does it mean? When I say coordinate system, what does it mean? If you don't have the basics and you start with a book, there they are teaching you solving system of linear uh, uh, equations. They are teaching you matrix algebra. Somebody is teaching you Python course to solve uh, you know, these equations or R, R code to solve these equations. How would you understand? Really, really, you will struggle. That is one of the challenge and very serious challenge. Right? So you need to study it in the right sequence. It is okay if you feel first few weeks or months, depending upon how much time you dedicate to learn it, you are spending just to learn the basics and you don't know anything fancy there. It is okay. Foundations should be strong. Okay? And the very uh, important question how to find answers. As a student of mathematics, I used to struggle it. Uh, and it was my school days, I remember, 9th, 10th class. I used to solve a lot of problems. I used to love solving problems. But as I said, I was making a lot of mistakes that time. I was really great in math. I scored 9900 in many of the subjects in my UG, PG degrees in math. Right? But I used to make mistakes. In 9th, 10th class, I used to make mistakes. So my answers would not match. While I was practicing in exam, you know, I had enough practice. So I used to struggle. Okay, my two questions, I'm not able to get the answers or I'm not able to prove left-hand side equal to right-hand side. Whom would I ask? Now the math teacher in the class, really great teachers I got, but probably they are really occupied to answer each and every student's each and every query, right? So I say, ma'am, I have solved this. Can you check where I have done wrong? The answer she will give me is, Please do it again neatly on the new paper and you will be able to do it. Because it's difficult for the teacher to solve everything, right? And it is even more difficult for us or anyone to look at the solved problem and find out the mistakes. It's better you start fresh and you will be able to do it, right? So that was really, really a big challenge for me during those days. Thankfully, these days, if I want to learn anything and if I face that, I really don't know it. I have a lot of resources. So I would tell you and I would suggest you if you don't uh, already are familiar with, you need to join some of the QA sites, Stat Exchange to start with, a very good community. You might be knowing the Stat Overflow for coding problems, cross-validated for statistical problems. There is mathematics community also. There are dedicated Google groups also. You might find some of the learners community, telegram community or something else. Find some place where you can ask questions without hesitation. You can discuss and you can get answers. Right? I understand asking questions in statistics, easy, coding, super easy. But asking questions in math, you need to do latent typing. You know, type. Math typing again takes a lot of time. I understand that. But worth the pain if you are getting the answers. Okay. So, solutions, I think I already discussed that you should learn from the appropriate resources. Appropriate means the one which is best for you as per your learning style. Maybe you need a mentor or a guide or an instruction, uh, instructor. Uh, maybe you need to ensure that you are doing it in the right sequence. Maybe you need to learn how to learn. It is really very important. Even suppose you think, okay, you are able to understand what I teach and you requested me, okay, I want to learn it from you. So I am trying to teach the best, but how you are trying to learn? You need to learn it 
revise it every day, take notes. There are many ways you should take notes and revise things. So again, you know, we can have a separate talk sometimes else to, you know, talk about how we should learn, what are the best ways to learn any technical subject so that we retain maximum, right? So maybe sometimes else, but yes, you need to be open and learn how to learn. And of course, as I said, QA sites and communities where you can get answers. Okay, now let's come to the main topic. multiple approaches to grasp statistics or mathematics. So for both it is applicable. There are four different approaches in my opinion, sometimes mix and match. One approach is mathematical statistics. So if someone is doing BSc, MSc degree, they must have seen those kind of derivations, right? If you want to do regression, you will see that formula, the derivation, everything there, right? So those integration, if you want to find probability under normal distribution you will derive it like this so this is good for those who are from math background and i recommend there is a great mit course for that it is too deep in math but i think those who are not from math background can skip this approach because it would be difficult for them to look at the symbols derivations integration differentiation there will be a lot of things used which you might not be aware Right. So I think this is not the approach for non-math students. Second is university level courses that teach you applied math. They don't do a lot of derivations usually for engineering and MB students. MB students, engineering, not a too much of derivations are done in the class or the courses. But they give you data, maybe the tables. You need to compute things using calculator. For example, you want to compute regression, you want to compute equation, uh, you know, line of equation. So you need to find mean, variance, correlation, coefficient. So they give you data, small table. You open calculator, calculate things and calculate, right? So this is one way. Here in those books, you will find some of the applications, some of the examples, so that you get some idea, okay, how this can be used, okay? This approach will be suitable to university students, engineering MBA students. But I think this approach is, again, not a good approach for data science learner. Because you are in data science, ML, you have the tools. You don't need to really compute things with calculator, paper, and pen, right? So don't just spend too much time there. You don't need to focus on the formulas. Skip that. Third approach is you learn applied statistics, but your focus is not on manual calculation, but on application of concepts. As I said, normal distribution. So if you want to find some probability that a variable takes this value or between this to this value, something like that. So you can imagine, okay, this is normal distribution curve. And I'm saying the variable takes value between this point to this point. So I want to find this. I'm not going to do this integration thing, right? I'm going to use some applets or some programming language or something else to calculate it. Thankfully, we have a lot of interactive tools and applets which anyone can run you don't need to know coding to do it so somebody needs to teach you concept without showing you the formulas scary notations tables calculations just the concept idea use cases application so that you can relate in your area how what kind of problems you can solve and then Solve those things using the online interactive tools without any coding. I'll show you some. Of course, those who are programmer can learn practical statistics using MATLAB, R, Python, SAS, SPSS, whatever tool you know, Excel, whatever, right? And that way, maybe you don't know too much about the formulas or everything, but you can verify the facts, the theorems and all. Now, oh, I think I spoke too much. Uh, is it okay if I extend a little bit uh, into this session? Okay, you said word problems you can't understand. So in that case, you really need to spend time on reading it slowly, reading it and converting it to simple layman's term, plain English words, trying to figure out what is given to you and what they are asking or expecting from you. Right, and uh, it takes some time and experience 
and you need to tell your teacher or professor to give you more word problems examples so that you can understand it like in inferential statistics before teaching any concept hypothesis null alternate p value one tail two tail any concept i show them five ten use cases i just pause and ask them to read we discuss what is there what we can do and then we start technical right so that way probably you can learn the word problem thing as you have asked okay these are some of the topics which you need to learn for statistics and i'm talking about for data science okay so of course you need to have understanding of data data various sources of data sources of bias population sample etc but also various uh, data types numerical categorical and all other data types cross sectional time series primary secondary everything about data data quality spend good amount of time on that then tabulation method if you have data what are different ways you can put it into table be creative i ask you five questions i say collect data from 20 friends you will get your answers now i say put it in excel table what are creative ways you will put it in a table right usually we have the variables here in the columns of excel and we have the observations here in the rows right but still there are many other ways long data format short data format and many many other ways frequency table cross tables understand about those descriptive statistics is the next topic you should study right central tendency dispersion of course i'm not going to teach you here i'm just telling you the topics next is visualization so you can watch my previous talk on this topic. I really talked too much about it. Apart from which chart to create where, reading the chart, creating the chart, there are a lot of things which can be discussed here and studied there. Probability concept. Now those who are from math and you have the permutation, combination, counting principle, all the backgrounds, logics, really great. If you don't have, it's okay. It's okay. Just understand what is probability, what is complementary event, when do you add probabilities, when do you multiply probabilities, and maybe Bayes' theorem. Independent dependent events, exclusive or non-exclusive events, basics, right? And I say it is okay if you don't understand addition multiplication theorem. If you can't write the formula, it is okay. If you can't write Bayes' theorem formula, perfectly fine. If you can just understand the logic and solve problem, good enough, good enough, right? So I can't teach you right here, but really, really amazing way to learn probability without looking at any formulas. Okay, distributions, binomial, Poisson, normal, the common two, three distribution you should start with. Sampling theory, you can skip it if you don't have too much time. The basics, how do you use the example? What are the sources of bias? Just read that much, that is enough. Different sampling techniques are there if you want to read. Sampling distribution, CLT, inference, and how do you select appropriate test? There are so many tests out there. So which test? T-test, ANOVA, chi-square, F-test, Fisher's test, which one would you apply? And if you're done with all that, then prediction, classification, clustering, evaluation matrix, a lot of things you can do, which are actually the part of machine learning now. Okay, so these are broadly the topics I mentioned, right? Because it is not the stats class, so I'll keep it uh, limited here. Now, I would like to show you a few tools. Um, here are the links, but let me, it's already open. Let me show you there how you can learn those topics quickly. So here, um, okay, let me first wind up the PPT and then I'll show you the tools, right, to save time. In mathematics, what all you should learn? <clears throat> so there are many things, but you might be knowing you need to know linear algebra. But before linear algebra, you should have basic understanding of at least the coordinate system, x, y, axis, the coordinates, right? The basic things so that you can understand it. Okay. After linear algebra, calculus. In calculus, differentiation, integration. But before that, you should understand functions, limits, Continuity, what is the meaning of a derivative? What is the meaning of an integration? The meaning, conceptual meaning, formulas comes later. And actually, it is okay if you can't do formulas. 
for the moment. Those who are at the level, they can understand formulas, then all the rules, theorems of differentiation, integration, little bit of practice so that you can quickly jump into that whenever needed. And these days we have Google. If you forget anything, quick Google search will tell you the formula. Geometry, basic geometrical concepts, distance at least, you know, the Cartesian system, polar system, distance, basics, right? Numerical methods, there can be many, but basically in numerical methods, you can see solving system uh, of linear equations, right? Those kind of methods. Optimization, again, linear uh, system, non-linear optimization, constraint, non-constraint optimization. If these words are alien to you, neutron Raphson method, gradient descent method, the basics. Right, uh, the variance of gradientation methods, those at least you need. Probability I mentioned, stats I already mentioned. So these are the main areas of mathematics, right? Now, uh, I'll tell you the tool, but give me a moment to wind it up. Now I have included some of the references here, right? So references I have mentioned, I have not read all of the books, confession here, because, you know, I'm a math uh, prof student. I was a math student. I have done MPhil and PhD in math. So I had done math with all my, you know, study books in university. So I already had the background. So I don't really need to buy a book to study those topics. In case I want to brush up something, I Google whatever I find suitable for me, I read from there, right? I was from Rajasthan, Hindi medium school. I had my own books by the local authors there. And for me, those books were great and I got good fundamentals. But I'm referring you the one which can help you. For example, this book is about mathematical statistics. MB students have this book, they have different versions of it. Mathematical statistics means you will have the mathematical formula, correlation, regression, everything. If you want to take approach number two, the formula and calculation by hand. The Similar or same topics are there in the books by Sheldon M. Ross. I have checked it online. I have read a few pages, right? I found that they are also having the similar explanation, similar kind of derivation, right? Although I have not read it perfectly, I have read it um, to a great extent. So I can't uh, really say everything, but I prefer if you are finding everything in the book by Indian authors, you should prefer that. This is one of the best books you can understand. This is by all these professors. She is my favorite professor from Duke University. Long, long back, I had taken her course on course, Coursera to brush up some important concept on statistics, and I really loved it. So the book, they have the website, Open Intro Statistics. You can Google, they have the website. And everything, audio, uh, I mean, video, different books, code, solution, everything is there. I love, I love this book. Right. And this is for data science learner, actually, uh, no mathematical derivation as such. This is for those who are good with Python and programmers like it. Somehow being a person of math, I really don't like to learn the conceptual topic with programming because the rigor is lost. So I personally don't like it. But yes, if you are a programmer, you will like it. This is also a popular book. And this book is also, I think, uh, how not to lie with the statistics. You will find uh, so many good ideas and concepts there, right? So I'm not saying read everything. Figure out which book you would like to start with. Probably this book. Or if it is heavy for you, this book, right? Just start with one book, maybe. Try to read one or two or three chapters. Give it time to digest everything, right? Give it time, read it, revise it, give it time. And for your queries, go to Stack Exchange website or Quora, right? And ask questions there and you will get really great answers there, right? And then go to next topic. So that's what my uh, suggestion is. For linear algebra, there are many books. As I said, I have done everything from my books, but then later to prepare my YouTube videos, actually there was a training requirement and I said, you know, I love linear algebra, but it's been 15, 16 years I have taught it. So I need to brush up. So that time I thought, okay, to teach it, I need to brush up. So I uh, got this book, No Bullshit Guide, and I really love this book, right? So this book is a great book you can start with, and I'm sure you will understand and enjoy this book.
and uh, using this book because that time i was studying i started creating some videos as well so i have a playlist on linear algebra i'm sure you will like those videos you will really enjoy but it's not complete playlist right maybe i'll add later on and these books have the code by matlab and python or just by python as i said coders like these books but person like me don't like these books because we think we are focusing on the code and losing the rigor right so personally i think that this is not a good book linear algebra by strang they have a lecture series and the books and the notes it is good and three blue uh, one brown kind of youtube channel is also there with nice intuitive explanation uh, to linear algebra calculus and many other concepts for calculus these are the books right and uh, i have not read any of these books but yes i have checked the reviews and first few pages so i recommend this is also very famous the same person their notes or this is famous this is actually uh, if you say calculus by stewart i think those who are not from math will hate it right so you need to find what you can understand in simple words so i think those who are from not bad math background they will find this one simple to understand rest you can read few pages first chapter at least and figure out okay these days we can find books easily right and if you are not willing to read different books for different topics it's too heavy for you you can just go with one book where you will find all books sorry all topics needed for data science or machine learning almost all topics linear algebra and calculus and stats and everything so that is enough if you think i really can't spend too much time to study everything from different books go with this book this is a really really beautiful book you will really enjoy it if you want to study geometry from it very nice beautiful explanation for beginners and this is my favorite book i think you all know it if you are into data science and machine learning islr is a famous book introduction to statistical learning with r ISLR one of the best books to get started with machine learning they had a book where the code was with r but later on demand they started the Py they launched the python version as well so islp in their website you will find again the lecture series videos books practice questions code images solutions everything this was the new author who has helped with the python version of the book rest of the authors are there for the r book right so i think you know what are must have books what are must have topics what is the tentative sequence to start with right so that's all now as i said i need to show you the interactive tools to convince you that learning it is easy if you are learning it using the tools it will help you or at least it will increase your interest and meanwhile or after that if you have any queries put in the chat i am taking some extra minutes i hope that is fine to you so for example like i said linear algebra if you ask me what is a vector i don't want to teach you right here but this much is okay if you ask me what is a vector my answer would be dependent on who you are if you are from physics you will understand a vector you will denote it by some small letter with the arrow on the top and you will say okay vector is like it has some magnitude and it has some direction so if this is a vector maybe velocity so how much is the velocity 10 km per hour in the direction this direction right that is a vector so physics student represent the vector like this they talk about how much is the magnitude of the vector as i said 10 km per hour this is the magnitude and they talk about what is the angle what is the direction physics student they will understand fine math student how do they understand the vector math students say that vector is actually u x x coordinate i cap basis vector u y y coordinate basis vector 
Anyone able to recall? Math students? If not, don't worry. I am not here to teach you. But I'm just showing you different approaches. Okay. Coders. Okay. Geometry student also represented like this. Suppose this is a vector, right? So the top of the vector, I'm calling it the point P. What is the coordinate of point P? Probably it is 3 here and it is 3 here. Maybe. Right? So 3, 3 is the coordinate. So maybe I can say vector U is nothing but this point 3, 3. Another way of representing my vector. So math student was saying it is 3i cap. Remember 3j cap. Those who don't understand, please forgive me. I'm not explaining everything here. I'm just trying to highlight same topic can be learned different way in different approaches. Okay. Maybe some programmers here. Programmers here. How do I represent this vector? This vector? For programmers, I will say if you are a Python learner, I will say vector is a list of two elements, 3 and 3, because I'm talking about 2D space. 3D space, 3 elements, 4D space, 4 elements, right? Matrix notation, I will say it is a column matrix, column vector, right? So you see, just one thing, I have different ways to explain it. So this is really, really important you figure out what way you can understand it. If I am to teach you linear algebra, suppose I am taking a course right here and I am starting to teach linear algebra. First, I will try to interact, give you a few examples and try to understand which language is better for you. And I will use those notations in those languages to explain. Now, these kind of tools, of course, I am limiting to explain, but these kind of tools can help you to understand the vector operations. So, for example, you can see here, they have a lot of operations here. So, you can, okay, it was vector addition, sum of vectors, multiplication, difference, linear combination, dot product, projection, a lot of concepts. I'm not teaching you all of this, right? But these kind of tools will help you grasping things which are maybe difficult for you to grasp when teacher is drawing things on the board and explaining. <coughs> Although when I draw on the board, I try to make it interactive and explain it. For example, this is one vector. This is another vector. I want to add the vector. So I need to move this vector, you know, uh, at the stop, starting at the stop and parallel. So I'll draw it like this. Okay, this line is moving here, moving here, moving here, moving here. Right? Or maybe I'll put a marker and I'll just drag it and I'll show so that they grasp it. But sometimes it's still it is difficult for the student to grasp. These tools will help them because I will explain two, three here and I will give them the tool to play around. Now they will play around, right? They will change the vectors. Ah, uh, they will change the vectors. From where I'm getting the pen selected. It's not this pen, maybe this this tool's pen. Okay, don't know. So ignore it. So I'll uh, teach them and I'll allow them to play with it. They can try experimenting with the answers and they can learn the topic better. Okay, for example, if you want to learn probabilities, very basic concept. Although it is easy for, I think, you people to compute basic probability. Just giving you one example, if someone is finding it difficult, you can... Ask the person to fill the jar. So I'm saying in my jar, I have these many pink balls, these many purple balls, these many green balls, right? And what is the probability of picking a striped, the green one, marble, right? So because it is three out of total 38, now I'm not teaching you, but I will teach those students, they will be able to understand. And you can get a new student, sorry, new statement, for the same configuration, new statement, or you can clear the jar and do it. I think this way you can even teach five, six year old kid the concept of probability, the basic concept. And this is only calculating probability, basic. I know there are many concepts, so there are many the tools. I'm not showing you all, right? This is again interactive book for some topics of statistics. 
so they don't have a lot of topics and they really don't have a lot of content here so don't expect this book to teach you everything but this book can help you to teach the basics for example you want to learn about expectation so i'm not doing it you read what is there you try to understand what they are saying and they are saying do it do it do it you are doing the experimentation and they are showing you something right so if you read it you do the experimentation you will be able to relate to the topic i am not waiting for you people to grasp the topic and i am not even explaining the topic i am just highlighting there are many tools out there which can explain you different concept if you know machine learning then you might have heard about k means clustering so if you want to do k means clustering for this data set so these kind of tools can help you okay sorry these type kind of <coughs> tools can help you to grasping the concept of k means clustering oh oh i added so many centroid sorry about that but you can learn the concept i'm not teaching you k means clustering here i'm just telling you these tools can help you right uh i'll give you chat time 5 10 minutes yeah drop everyone write your questions to the q and a session uh, section i'll take your chat after 2 minutes these kind of applets can help you understand the concept remember 68 uh, 99.7% rules of normal distribution and teachers tell you that if you have this normal distribution thing so in oops sorry bad drawing in one sigma limit 68% of the area is there two sigma limit 95% three sigma limit 99.7% area those rules if you remember we can verify here mean is 0 sigma is 1 i can change it if i want for now i am keeping it the same i can change what probability i want so suppose i say between this limit to this limit this is my one sigma limit mu plus sigma is 1 mu minus sigma is minus 1 so i am finding out probability that x is between minus to plus 1 this is the probability you don't need rote learning you are able to see things happening 95% 99.7% all other probabilities you can find out change the numbers play with this and find out the probabilities what it can be right this probability that x is less than 7 is 0.15 okay so what is the probability that x is greater than 7 this area right side area it is 1 minus previous probability right so i am not teaching you here but when i teach or when you learn from these tools you can go slow explore the tools so here you don't need coding now students say i don't know python i don't know r i am not good in that i don't know you know integration i am not uh, able to understand how to solve problems of normal distribution at least you can learn this tool and get the fundas clear right okay this thing many calculators see random number generators z score this is normal probability whatever whatever you want to do for example z score you know z score we all do it converting data to z score means we subtract the mean and divide it by sigma scaling we call it suppose i have some number in my data overall my data have the mean 50 and the standard deviation 10 what should be the z score x minus mu by sigma that is what we do 70 by 10 it should be 7 let's do it so quickly you are able to calculate right although i personally believe things which you can calculate don't use calculators but some student don't like calculating things so you can enjoy these calculators bayes theorem calculator everything you have calculator central limit theorem calculator lot of tools are there and i have not yet talked about data visualization amazing tools are there for interactive visuals 
right so these days teaching tedious complex abstract subject is really easy if i am ready to spend my time and energy to prepare lecture find out the right resources find out the best approach to my student then you will be really learning great way but if i save my time and effort and i go through you know years old ppt then i would not be uh, probably using the best way to teach you okay questions you have any tell me amit kumar uh, there is no single tool which i have shared with you so maybe you can google for a particular thing for example normal distribution applet binomial distribution applet statistics calculator random number generator calculator z score calculator bayes theorem calculator you will google you will find right in case you still need some of the links or the books names then maybe i can put them in a document and share it with the uh, host the organizer and if they can share it with them with you else you will have the recording so you can see the books name in the recording okay so uh, somebody has asked about the interview thing see one thing it depends upon which interview what topic they are asking so it's really really a vague and vast topic to discuss but i would uh, answer from the perspective of math and stats if it is an interview where interviewer is from math and stats and they are asking you question if they are asking you stats first thing they are expecting concepts concepts some of the interviewers might focus on formulas as well but most of the interviewers are expecting you to know the concept to be able to explain well suppose you understand central limit theorem you can play with the applet you are able to understand i am asking you in the interview explain central limit theorem and you are blank or you are trying hard but you are not able to explain see in statistics very 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 important thing is communication because it's like common sense it's like plain english so if you can explain it in very simple word then only you can make it effective right so you might need to practice little bit about how you can explain that topic especially in statistics if i ask you p value very beautiful concept and a student really ask you know answer it wrongly so you need to spend time how you can explain it type one error type two error which one is you know more risky how would you explain it so you need to think about the case examples and prove your point they might ask you counter question be ready for that so in my opinion for statistics concepts are more important mathematics again depends upon the interviewer sometimes they might expect you to know the formulas derivation for people like me the answer will work that okay i have done it few years ago right but because you people are probably trying to enter trying to prove yourself so you might need to answer those things but again the concepts the applications i would focus on applications and the interpretations the geometrical meanings it is important so for example if you say linear transformation so if i am an interviewer i might not ask you this is a problem do it eigen values eigen vector i will not ask you to compute it but i can ask you can you explain me eigen vectors what do you really mean by it simple words to a layman how would you explain it so i think those kind of preparation is needed for that you need to really have a good understanding and great communication as well okay application also if you are studying a topic google these days it's really easy google or use some ai tools like chat gpt don't rely on it perfectly but use it to some extent to find out application of the topic which you are studying this will prepare you for the interview right this is really important 
and be confident. And one small tip, I'm not sure if it is uh, for you or not, but sometimes students are having the answers, they lack the confidence or communication skills, or they are not able to find suitable words in English language. May not be the case with you, but I have seen great students, they are not confident explaining things in English, in their own words, simple words, right? So they struggle more with the language, finding best words rather than explaining the concept. In that case, request them and answer it in the language which you understand, maybe Hindi language everyone understands, right? But your concept, your application, and your explanation should be really impressive. I think I answered your question. What else? Yeah, so I'm done. If you have any other question, let me quickly check any other question. Uh, starts, I think, Nikhilesh, I have given you the topics. Start with data. All the topics in that sequence, all the books which I have referred to you. So you can start with mathematical statistics, Nikhilesh, if you have good math background. Else you can start with open intro statistics or both books you can refer. And then switch to ISLR as well. All the books I mentioned, they are in the PPT. Calculus again for every topic, see, find the best book, go slow, do easy problems before moving to the complicated topic. That's what I will say, Pratisha for now. Application of math in real life. These days, as I said, ask chat GPT, give me five application of uh, system of equation, solving system of equation. Right? Give me two application of matrix multiplication. And ask that and refine your queries. Prompt engineering is another thing. Refine your queries. I'm sure you will reach where you want. You will find the answers what you want. I need to brush up important concepts. So I told you important topics, Deepti, and good books to start with. And reliable sources were there in my PPT. You will find that in the recording. Ansh, I think I answered your question. So I think I answered all the questions. Right. So that's all from my side. It was nice interacting from you. Anything else? Or I think I have taken more time than what was expected. That's all. We can end the meeting if no question. Okay, yeah. Thank you, everyone.